Our guest is uh, James Lemon from The Growth Work. Thank you, James. Thank you, James, for coming here. Okay, so uh, I am Natalie Pierre-Virovac, the program director and uh, in relations with hotels for Vatel USA. Uh, Vatel is a hospitality uh, business school uh, that have 50 campuses all over the world. And here in the United States, we partner with Alliance International University. Um, Saba Osiot will introduce the school and, uh, and the program that uh, Alliant offers beside the Vettel Hospitality Program. I will also introduce the program uh, with Vettel and the opportunities that we can offer to the students enrolling for BA and MBA programs. And today, James Lemon is going to uh, present the growth work. It's a platform uh, amazing uh, opportunity for students, young professionals in the hospitality industry to um, get in touch and, and, uh, and work with mentors uh, also uh, in the hospitality industry with specific uh, field of expertise. And uh, we will also have uh, Laura and Steve uh, who are mentees already uh, working uh, on this platform and uh, working with mentors. We will finish this uh, session with Q&As. So if you have questions, uh, please use the, uh, the, the chat room and, uh, and write your questions and uh, we will answer them as much as possible toward the end of the, uh, this session. Uh, so uh, with no further ado, I will introduce Saba Oziot. Uh, the, the program director at uh, Alliant. Saba, uh, would you tell us uh, about uh, Alliant and this uh, beautiful partnership we have with Patel? Absolutely. Thank you very much, everybody. And thank you for um, joining the webinar and thank you for inviting me. So um, California School of Management and Leadership is uh, a school, a business and management school within Alliant International University. We are a, a small private university um, and we have multiple campuses throughout California. Um, I am, or California School of Management and Leadership is located within San Diego campus. And we have multiple programs, one of which is what Natalie just mentioned, is our manage, uh, MBA program uh, with hospitality management uh, specialization or concentration. Um, this is a program that is, as we call it, um, CPT approved or practical training, curriculum practical training approved, which means that students, as they're going through these, uh, their program, MBA program, that they are allowed to work or uh, do internship throughout the program, which is obviously very attractive to a lot of students. It allows them to gain, not only to gain experience, apply their knowledge uh, while they are studying and learning, um, but also to earn some money. Obviously, it's always helpful to students. We also have um, an MBA program with um, information systems technology and digital marketing specializations. Um, these are our more technology oriented programs and those programs are also CPT approved. Um, in addition to the MBA programs that I oversee, we also have um, MS um, master's uh, degree in data analytics in information systems and technology in healthcare analytics. And we also have some undergraduate programs, one of which is the hospitality management program. So um, feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in any of our programs. By the way, we also have short term certificate programs in those different areas of studies that we offer in technology. And we're also looking into offering some certificate programs in hospitality as well. So feel free to reach out to Natalie or myself if you would like to get more information about our courses and offerings. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sabah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now to introduce the Vatel program and the, the Vatel schools uh, quickly. Um, so, uh, Vatel, as I said, uh, is a hospitality business school um, uh, with a group encompassing 50 campuses all over the world, many in Europe, uh, five in France, Spain, um, Russia, China, Philippines, uh, uh, everywhere, Africa. 
Um, so um, the the school that we have here in Los in um, uh, San Diego and uh, soon Los Angeles again um, is a program uh, for the MBA program. Uh, it's done in one year of uh, academic program, and during the academic program, as Saba was saying, this program uh, being CPT approved, uh, it means that the students are able to work up to 20 hours a week uh, while uh, studying. Uh, so it, it allows them to start um, uh, to have a, a, a good um, professional experience and uh, earning money as well. And then after the first year, the program is uh, dedicated to work experience. And so the students can enroll in OPT, which is a work authorization, allowing the students to have a full-time um, um, professional experience. Uh, for at least uh, uh, for a maximum of 12 months. So uh, this program is really uh, oriented in um, expertise uh, academically and professionally. And that's the reason why we are so happy to partner with uh, the growth work and James Lemon, because uh, having a mentor uh, in these early years of uh, the professional life, being an internship or you know as a young graduate, uh, it is so important to have uh, this connection with um, people in the industry uh, who can really um, help and show the way on becoming a, a really good professional. So um, I'd like now to introduce uh, James Lemon, uh, who I'm so happy uh, that we can share these uh, hours uh, with today. Thank you, Jim, for being here and uh, and bringing your your beautiful guest. And uh, you know, we we have uh, uh, mentors and mentees joining us tonight today. Uh, so, if you want to talk maybe a little bit about your background and uh, and how this uh, platform uh, was created and how you get the idea of uh, creating this platform. Absolutely, absolutely. No, they are beautiful. And uh, I'm very lucky that they're giving up their time to, to chat with us. So um, thanks, everyone for joining us. Um, I was going to take about 15 minutes and tell you a bit about how really the growth works is setting up a program to support connect and encourage development across early careers in hospitality, both um, students and, and recent graduates. In fact, all levels really, because I think you never stop learning. And you can always benefit from from a mentor. So um, I'll probably talk for about 10, 15 minutes or so, but I really want to get into a, a kind of summit panel discussion um, with the team um, because they've got so much to, to add, uh, far more than I have. And I think, to be fair, I'm probably speaking on behalf of, of, of all of them. Um, so kind of what I want to talk through really is, is really how like, people are going to be at the heart of this industry forever. And, and it's us that are going to power the recovery. But we've got to recognize things are, are very tough right now. It's a really challenging environment to step into as new graduates. And so we want to kind of help equip you with the tools um, and the reality that you're facing. Um, and of course, um, through mentorship, I think offers a really nice guide over the next couple of years. So I'll talk a little bit about who we are and the journey that we're on as a business. Talk a bit about how we see today's reality. You know, of all of our mentoring discussions going on around the world every day, uh, what we see on the front line. Um, some emerging themes about what you might want to think about in terms of what's coming next. How to take charge of your career, what I call the employability checklist, but really tactically, what could you be doing day to day to make sure you've got the best chances of success in, in the recovery? Um, and then really just introduce you know, some skills there, as I think are important, the way our platform works. And of course, it's an open invite. It's completely free to join. I'm expecting 20 new signups as soon as this, uh, as this summit is over. And then I want to dive into our panel discussion, really hearing from our mentees and mentors as to why um, they're choosing to spend time together, give back and, of course, work on their own work on their own careers. So who are we and why do we deserve to come and chat to you? Well, the growth works, uh, we, we really are hospitality experts at heart. I spent five years in, in IHG, you know, the Holiday Inn and Crown Plaza and Intercon brands, four years in Travelport, one of the big travel tech companies, and a couple of years in startups before starting the growth work. So we've seen all angles of the industry. And our DNA has always been, we want to help build a sustainable future. We want great strategies and innovation to be part of how we work in hospitality but it hasn't always been. Um, and that really made a lot of sense to us that at the start of this crisis, in addition to obviously our kind of core consulting services, 
we would try and put the right people in the room to have great discussions about the future of the industry. And that really led to what is our, our mentoring program. So what are we seeing? Well, look, it's a really tough time in, in the whole economy, but obviously we've picked really the wrong industry for this particular crisis and things are especially tough for us. At the same time, I think you know, chat to senior leaders and they'll tell you that it is a cyclical industry and this is much worse than before. You know, it's, it's almost unprecedented we'd ever shut hotels before. But at the same time, once you've been through a couple of these cycles, there are toolkits and playbooks and there are ways to act in a recession and a recovery that it can be learned and can be shared. I think with this crisis being a lot deeper, we're seeing a real need to adapt new technology, new ways of working and practices really quickly because the market's moving so quickly, because the way consumers are behaving is changing week to week, month to month. You know, we, we as hoteliers have to think, well, we need to drive revenues in a different way. We need to look after our costs in a different way. And I think that's going to mean more innovation and more technology. The industry needs people who can solve problems. You know, are you stepping into this as a future leader or, a, you know, an, an entry level employee thinking, you know, I know what I can bring. I know what the industry needs and I'm building my own skills in that space. The industry is only going to be solved by the people in it. Tech can't fix it itself. And so we stepped in and we thought, well, actually, maybe we can have a player role here. You know, as people are studying or when they finish their studies or when they just join the community without coming the academia route, perhaps if we could provide support, development, networking opportunities with the best of the industry's senior leaders, then they, we can actually encourage better outcomes, better employability, people to be happier at work and, um, and more successful. So that's our bold mission. So, so what are we literally seeing? Well, here's, here's three skills areas I would definitely think about for the next few months and couple of years. One is hotel technology can be more critical than ever. The only way to run more lean and, and more efficient is going to be putting tech technology in front of our guests. And then, of course, back of house as well to manage our staff and rotors and uh, communications to manage the core systems of the hotel, like property management, and obviously to manage the way we distribute to guests and work on our websites and with our third party channels. And that feeds me to our next theme. If you haven't heard about it already, you know, there's a real debate and battle going on between who owns the customer. Is it you know, the hotel and the hotel companies bringing in guests direct through loyalty programs, websites and apps? Is it guests coming through third party channels like Expedia and Booking.com? Um, or is it a healthy mix of both, but ultimately driven in delivering a great guest experience no matter where the, the, the guest wants to book? So we're going to be seeing a lot more conversations about customer segments. You know, suddenly this year has been about the domestic customer, the leisure customer, which is a world away from where we were 12 months ago, really with an industry mostly built on you know, international business travelers. So some really interesting discussions about customer segments, who they are, how to find them, where they book and what experience they want to have. And then lastly, I think we're going to move away from this very narrow view of the industry defining success as bedroom revenues. You know, we talk about RevPARs and ADRs are probably terms you've heard. I think we're going to be talking much more of an industry about total revenues, much more creativity around perhaps we should be making money from restaurants and food delivery. Perhaps we should be using our event spaces in more creative ways for pop-up restaurants or art galleries perhaps we should be doing more around co-working or co-living lots of really interesting opportunities that's more than just uh, flogging hotel rooms so just some some industry themes there that i would definitely lean into if you're thinking about well what am i going to be discussing at interview what do i need to get familiar with um, you know what should i be reading about so I want to get into what we call our employability checklist. There's really kind of six steps that I want to leave you with that if nothing else from today, you can at least take away, even if you violently disagree with it, I definitely need to make these points. The first thing to say is you are not alone. You know, this is not uh, a thing that's just hitting people studying in 2020 or just graduating right now. Today's reality is tough for everyone. And in our platform with over 150 people, we've got people at all levels of business who are either now out of work or they are you know, uncertain about their jobs or they're in work and actually working harder than ever because there's fewer people and more to be done. But the big question is, are you ready? You know, step one of our employability checklist is, have you confronted reality yet? You know, I can't make this year easier for you in terms of how competitive it's going to be and the way you're going to have to lean in and step up your efforts to get out there, be confident and, and find work. 
it's absolutely tougher than it was last year. And, and that's obviously something you're going to need to confront. But it's also something you're going to have to embrace if you're going to want to make a success of your early career. And you absolutely still can. There are lots of pockets of opportunities for those people who prepare, are proactive, and they know what they're looking for. So as I go through this checklist, the second thing to do is, have you, have you looked at yourself yet? Have you prepared yourself? Do you know what you want to do next? And do you know why? Have you thought about your best days at work and what you enjoy? Have you thought about the kinds of teams you want to be on? Have you thought about the content of your work? You know, do you love being out in front of guests? Or do you like being more back of house and working with numbers and data? You know, there's lots of different roles out there in this industry. The best early leaders are the ones that are already getting certain about the kind of things that they enjoy. That's not to say that you've definitely got a path set for life and you know, you know that you have to be a GM by 35. Great if you've got that drive. If you're still finding a way, that's fine. But do have that self-reflection. Just think about actually, what are my strengths? What have I already learned? And what do I enjoy? The third step is really about how broad is your horizon? Again, if you know you want to be a front desk manager in a five-star luxury hotel in Los Angeles, you're going to have a really tough job market right now. But actually, if you're thinking, you know, it's more about serving people, it's more about, um, you know, quality, there's certain aspects of that experience. And if you boil it down, actually, could you look more broadly? You know, we're seeing lots of the disruptive um, funded businesses like Sonda still growing quite quickly, which is more about service departments. It's more about tech led Airbnb type management. Marriott Homes and Villas is another one. And then outside of traditional hospitality, we're looking at people like the tech companies in the space, you know, who are still recruiting customer success teams or sales teams. And they're still thinking about the hospitality industry how it's going to be unlocked with technology and how we can help hotel chains and guests have a better future. So actually, that's not too far from what you've studied. They bite your hands off if you've got real hotel experience and you know how hard it is running a night shift or looking at revenue management or being out there managing sales accounts already. And then, of course, it might be that for a couple of years, you do need to sidestep away from what we call, you know, the hotel business for a couple of years. And we're seeing people who are looking at the experience you've got in customer service, in what we call you know, being an SOS industry that's just really solving problems on the fly, in things like loyalty, solving customer problems. There's a whole series of transferable skills you've got that you could easily switch into some of these big recruiting online players in the customer service or in other kind of customer service um, based industries. Tesla, for example, are one of the biggest hirers out of some of the Swiss hotel schools because they love the fact that that luxury hotel training really means you understand personal service. So just make sure you're thinking broadly enough uh, would be step three. And then step four is really where we start to get into it. Get proactive, speak up, build and grow. You know, if you're great, if you're absolutely taking the first step by coming to events like this. Have you got a question planned? Do you know what you want to ask the team? Do you know what you want to get out of it? You know, you get certain chances at events like this or on LinkedIn forums to speak up, show you've got a point of view, show you're smart and show you can get things done. And it's a great test case for when you're at work because it's exactly the same. If you never speak up, if you never write down your point of view, people won't know if you just don't get it or if you don't care or something else. But, you know, the opportunities will go to someone else. So I absolutely am a big believer in building a really strong online profile using your LinkedIn getting into the right industry groups, writing yourself a couple of blogs, and actually showing people that you've got a point of view on virtual events, on revenue management in 2020, on you know, going after domestic demand. Whatever it is you feel passionate about, just start writing some of that stuff down, get it published, show that you're interested. Even change your LinkedIn to you know, freelancer. And, and, and show that you've got a bit of a personal brand and that you're willing to get stuck in and offer some time up for work experience. And obviously feel free to take training. There's lots of free and low cost training out there as well. Step five is showing passion through research. So I'm now thinking you've kind of engaged a senior leader or you've applied for a job. Well, the only way you're going to get a job in 2020 is showing a lot of passion for it. Now, I understand you can't do hours of research for every job. And I believe me, more recently than you might think, I've been searching for jobs and it's really demoralizing not hearing back from people, especially if you're applying for lots. 
but just make sure before you click send on LinkedIn or, or the job platform, you spend five minutes on your website. And, and kind of step six here is just make sure you've taken a couple of minutes so that a short cover letter or the first couple of lines on your resume do reflect what that job is about. There's no point in applying for a job in a kind of hotel tech company. And the first line of your CV is, you know, I love creating fashion videos. It's just not going to connect. You need to be able to show how your experience or your passion areas link up with what that employer needs. So it's a whistle stop tour. I've certainly spent a lot longer working through it, but I just really wanted to kind of put that to you that this year is going to be all about being proactive. It's going to be all about confronting your reality and getting yourself out there with a personal brand and a digital profile that shows you've thought about what you want to do, shows you've got something to say, and then you know, really kind of lean into connecting to industry leaders because they will connect with you. They will grab 30 minutes on the phone with you if you show that you've understood what they're in they're all about and that it's an interesting conversation with someone who shares a passion so kind of moving forward i think four skills areas you should absolutely be looking at right now on the soft skill side one is creative innovation you know sign up to courses or go to webinars that are all about kind of um startups generating new ideas trying new things because that's going to be an injection of energy the hotel needs the next big theme is cross-training. So as hotel teams get leaner or teams have to collaborate more, there's an expectation that if you're a revenue manager, you're probably gonna to need to understand the world of sales and marketing and channels as well. You're gonna to have to have that quite broad commercial outlook. If you're in front desk operations, you're probably gonna to need to be able to how to make a great coffee or serve a great cocktail. So really think about cross-training and making sure you're exposed to lots of ideas outside your direct function or, or area of passion. Next up is agility, which is the idea to test stuff. It's the idea to probably work extra hours, unfortunately, but quickly move to a stage where you've tried something new, seen the results, shared it with a team. That's the only way we're going to get new ideas done. As a hotel industry, we've spent years evolving new systems, uh, new approaches. This year, we've had to move in, in weeks and months what we used to do in years. And then last is diversity. You know, so whether that's about really leaning into working into cross-functional teams, whether that's about championing female leaders or people from underrepresented backgrounds, success is going to mean embracing very, very diverse teams, thinking about creative solutions and breaking the mold um, that this is an industry led by, you know, senior, older people. This is now an industry which is, needs to be incredibly diverse and incredibly broad in the way we bring people of different ages, backgrounds, experiences together. So if you can get any experience in these kind of areas through uh, volunteering your time, through setting up your own mini enterprise, I think these are absolutely what will be requested um, in interviews and um, really need to show up. So what is the GrowthWorks community? What are we doing with Fatal and what's this, what's this all about? Well, kind of taking these, this kind of ethos into our own hands, we've built an online platform. It launches at the end of January. For now, we're using a beta. Uh, so we've got about 150 mentors and mentees on a Slack, Slack workspace from 30 different brands coming together weekly, monthly, for small group mentoring, to reach out to mentors, to tap into their new experiences. For online events, um, next week we've got one on women in business. Tomorrow we're talking about being a general manager in a crisis. Last week, I think we were talking about um, transferable skills. You know, the whole range of different topics that we're covering. We're helping each other out. So if you need CV reviews, resume reviews, if you wanna prepare for a job interview, you wanna prepare for a big presentation, you know, just put up a note and someone will have time. And we're crowdsourcing ideas. You know, people are asking actually what's the best training out there for new languages. I need to put electronic door locks in my hotel, what software works, what software doesn't. And we're just constantly sharing ideas. So my vision is we can build this trusted space where you know, students, graduates, people from all around the hospitality industry can come together from different hotel schools, different chains, hear about new job opportunities, attend new events, but really work on themselves and really think about, am I prepared for what's coming next, both you know, in the crisis and beyond? And am I setting in place the foundations for a strong future? 
So we would love you to join us because of our partnership with Vital. Um, you know, I think you can you can absolutely sign up direct. It's on thegrowthworks.com forward slash mentoring. It's entirely free to sign up. Come and join us and our community manager Bill will get you plugged into one of our one of our mentors. So I've definitely taken enough time. Today we're really excited to have um, two of our mentors and two of our mentees um, who have been with the program for different lengths of time to come and answer your questions about the reality of what's going on right now, how they're thinking about their own journeys and where they're going. So we've got we've got Patrick, who's formerly of IHG, now runs his own successful consulting light bulb um, out of the UK. Estelle um, has worked at a whole range of businesses, as she knows I love to mention, and finished top of her class at Glion, which I'll always remember, um, working, in, uh, working in luxury hotels in Barcelona. Uh, Laura um, has worked at the Camp Collection and Rosewood. And Steve is one of your own out of Vitell, um, who's doing some work experience at the, at the Hotel Beverly Terrace. So super excited to have you all here. Um, if you have questions, um, then please just drop them down in the chat. I will stop sharing my screen very elegantly and take a breath. Um, I don't think we have any questions yet. So while you jot down questions in either the chat or the q and I will absolutely get the mentors and mentees to do kind of quick introductions. So um, I will, Patrick, it's okay to ladies first. Why don't we start with, um, why don't we start with Estelle? Estelle, maybe you could take a moment, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about why, given how busy you are, you think it's important to spend some of your time mentoring at the moment. Yeah, thanks, James. Great to be here. Um, so my background, yeah, I, I studied also not at Vatel, even so I worked a lot with Vatel in the past. Uh, I studied at Lyon um, and worked as, um, in the last years. I started with Hilton, actually, in the elevator program, which I can only recommend to anybody uh, if you have a chance. Um, worked with Hilton for seven years afterwards for a German company called uh, Deutsche Hospitality. And now I'm working with minor hotels, NH Hotel Group uh, in Spain. Uh, I've worked a bit in all different departments, uh, both on hotel and regional. Last seven years, mainly on uh, hotel management uh, locally. Uh, through a lot of different crises uh, in a lot of different <clears throat> environments. And uh, yeah, now I'm in Barcelona, a beautiful city normally at the moment. Uh, it's a bit uh, sad with all restaurants and bars closed again since over a month. So uh, I started working with the Growth Works in April um, via Guillaume, so also via the hotel school. And uh, it's been a fantastic experience, actually. I wish, I wish something like that had existed when, when I was just getting out of school. Um, James mentioned already a lot of things. No, it's it's a fantastic network. Uh, you get to know. Normally, we rather have a chance to meet with people who are in the same company or live in the same city, or which we just know through school. But uh, here we have a chance to talk with people from around the world, different companies, different backgrounds, different industries, all related with tourism. Uh, I think uh, being a mentor or mentee, it's extremely rewarding to, uh, you know, to do all these type of discussions, um, especially in the difficult times we're living right now, to exchange um, how everybody is dealing with it. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great personal development. It's a great networking. I, I really enjoy it and um, I can only recommend it to anybody as a mentor or as a mentee I think uh, it's a uh, it's the same great stuff thanks thanks so that's great and, and Laura over to you I guess it's similarly it'd be great to kind of hear your your journey as well um, and I know it's been a rough year for you as well but maybe you could share a bit about why um, kind of mentoring has been valuable to you this year yeah so um, hello everybody I'm um, also a Glion graduate uh, sporting my Glion uh, souvenirs right here <laughs> Today, um, I graduated last year and went on to do a management training also in California at the Rosewood Hotel in Silicon Valley. I had a wonderful year, but due to COVID, obviously, um, the hotel closed and I had to, to fly back to my home country and ever since been been trying to keep connected with the industry. And I think that is the key uh, with why I joined the network and why it has been so wonderful is that I can whilst I'm looking for jobs out of the industry given the the, the difficult situation um, I can still feel that I am learning I am involved I am continuing my Gleon path so to say 
um, especially as I was a kind of career changer, having done Glion as my master's degree, and before that not having done a hotel school, it's really important that I, I can find a see through this crisis. Um, and, and yeah, then being able to have access to all the mentors has been wonderful. I've actually been able to talk to three different mentors individually, and all for different reasons, um, that, the kind of 30 minute slot that um, James was talking about. Um, one was because they were uh, in Germany and, and they were in, interested in guest relations and I was as well, or one was because of innovation. So it's, it's not only confined to one mentor, you can talk to all of them. And I also can't wait to talk to Estelle maybe one day, <laughs> you know. So that's, that's, that's my main reason. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Laura. Um, Patrick, over to you. So I think Patrick has the uh, incredible uh, bonus of being our very first mentor, I think, Patrick. I was just looking back at my notes today on the 26th of March when we first chatted. And I said, I've got this idea. And you're like, yeah, count me in. So I get, I'd love you. It'd be, obviously, I'd love to hear your journey. I think, I think you're, you'd be a fantastic mentor for a lot of people in this call. But maybe you could share a little bit about why you're kind of giving back and and maybe give us a clue as to some of the conversations you've been having with people over the last couple of months um, uh, that have been supportive for them. So James, and then I've got a bone to pick with you, mate, because I'm sure when you and I first spoke, you said I've got loads of mentors and you can just form part of the team. So yeah, there you go. You sold that one to us. No, it's great to great to be here. I like um, my. Um, I would absolutely echo uh, what Laura and Estella both said around why you would get involved in mentoring. Um, my background is I, I'm South African, but have worked overseas more than than I have in South Africa. I was in operations for a while for for about ten years, and I wanted to be a GM by the time I was thirty two for no other reason other than there was a GM who was thirty two, and I wanted to just be the same right at the time in South Africa. So not really much structure around it. Loved the operations, but actually too, as I got in, as I got more and more further down the, my career, what I, what I, what bugged me about operations was I couldn't plan. So I then took a bit of time off uh, and then went and determined what I wanted to do. And I started working for a, hospitali a hospitality software company, uh, Revenue Management Systems, you might've heard of them, Ideas. And I was a trainer for a while and I learned, how to, uh, I learned all about revenue management and trained with them uh, how to train other people on, uh, on the systems. Loved it, really enjoyed the travel and really enjoyed the ability to get out and speak to people and sort of give, um, you know, impart knowledge that I had and I was about a system that I was passionate about. And then I went back into hotels, but on the corporate side and I developed my skills to revenue management. I headed up revenue management for EMEA, uh, for IHG, and then moved into a more commercial world that sales, marketing, revenue management, branding, PR, et cetera, but for a much smaller group of hotels in um, the Middle East. So you can imagine, I moved to the Middle East just as the global financial crisis is kicking off. And everybody said, great move, Patrick. It's not going to impact the Middle East at all because it's all sovereign debt and sovereign wealth funds. Well, actually, what we under, when we looked at was when we under, unpicked that, it was absolutely all kind of a house of cards and it all came down, tumbling down. So, you know, I was trying to sell hotel rooms in Abu Dhabi uh, with 50% growth and in increase in number of rooms there and 45% red party declines across the business. So it's, it's just dire. My interest in, um, in sort of uh, starting my own business came from when I um, was working out in Asia and kind of just thought, look, I really love this part of the business, but actually, do I really want to be working in a big hotel company? Do I want to be sort of providing my services to them? So I started, I set up Lightbulb in 2016 doing uh, hospitality consulting in the commercial world, uh, training, and then also leadership and executive coaching, which is kind of where I got into the mentoring side because the mentoring part is very similar. There's some differences, but the mentoring side is much, is quite similar to coaching. Um, and the thing I love about it, as I said, would, would echo exactly what Laura and Estelle said, but the thing I love about, me about mentoring is I learn every single time. And it sounds like a cliche, oh yeah, really? You know, you experience with 30 years experience, do you learn? I learned today that in Bengaluru, they had a better October than they did last year uh, with COVID, uh, not with COVID. I learned all about ghost kitchens today um, because one of our mentees actually has just moved into that world around ghost kitchens in Panama City. So, you know, just the, the learning that goes on around that, the discussion I had two weeks ago is around food and beverage. I'm, I, I love that part. Total revenue management is a massive part of what I do, but still managed to learn about some of the guys who are operating on the food and beverage side there. So that's why I got into uh, the mentoring side of it. 
Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. And I think that's a critical, critical part. You know, I think we're here today to talk a lot about uh, early careers and developing, but I think it's so exciting to hear from our mentors and how much they're getting out of it too. So thanks for that, Patrick. So over to you, Steve, enough of these, enough of these Europeans. Uh, let's go, let's go stateside. I would love to hear from you. Obviously, you were one of the very first people at Vattel to get involved. You've been a real supporter of us on campus. Um, maybe kind of share, for those that don't know you, share a bit about your own profile and, and what made you kind of think that you know now's a good time to get some support as you think about your career absolutely thank you very much so hello everyone it's it's so difficult to say something after everything that has been said but quickly about myself so i'm a student uh, i was a student of uh, vatel brussels for the bachelor uh, vatel usa for the master uh, with uh, with natalie uh, as uh, as my director um, and I found a lot of opportunities when I came, when I came over here in the, in, in the U.S. before before COVID happened, uh, before the crisis happened, and and now who, who have guessed, but uh, now I have Estelle uh, that gives me the honor to be uh, to be my mentor. Um, and what I can say about it is that in our session in group or in private, um, it was a full tone of uh, of knowledge for me. Uh, for me, just to say quickly, for me, mentoring is, is so important, not only because it, it brings a, a knowledge and skills um, for us as mentee from the mentors, but uh, also mentoring provides this, this prof professional socialization and professional support. And we, as mentee, can see this, uh, this light out, out of the crisis. And, uh, and as you said, um, James, we, we can see that we are all together all together in this crisis. And I think uh, this is one of the most important. Uh, this is why I say directly yes, uh, when Natalie spoke to me about, about the concept. And, uh, and I think it's very, very much important to, to feel together to, so don't feel alone in this crisis, but not only in this crisis, I think that mentoring is, is very important for me as a student, as a, as a former student as a, of a master, of, a, of a, the master of Vatel. I think also for, for the networking, it's very, very important and, and exchange this knowledge um, that uh, I was able to do and I still am able to do with, uh, with Estelle and with, uh, with all the, the platform and all the mentors that are over here and all, also the mentees. I think it's also very important to say that, that we also speak between mentees and I think uh, this also brings a lot of knowledge uh, from around, around the world. Yeah, no, that's great. I think one one point I think you're all making is I, I've been calling it kind of mentors and mentees, but really it's just community, right? It's just members. Absolutely. It's just pe people have signed up to this community and you guys are all sharing with each other and everyone's kind of learning. And, and so that's great. That's, that's, that's really helpful. Um, so I, I, I'm going to get serious for a moment. You know, Patrick knows I struggle with that, but Emmanuel makes a great point. Thanks for that, Emmanuel, around just actually, it's a really challenging time right now. And, and I think it can be quite lonely with with all the uncertainty and obviously people sadly kind of leaving leaving our places of work around us or, or we've lost our jobs and and i've and i have sessions like this and i find it really interesting that there aren't many more questions and people aren't kind of really throwing themselves out there to check in with senior leaders like patrick and estelle or find out more again i'm kind of saying that for those listening uh, yeah we would love to hear from you but but i guess i'd turn to the community maybe patrick start with you what what do you how do you feel young people are kind of managing at the moment um what what would you say to someone who just is is feeling at a point where actually they don't know if they do want to throw themselves into a community where maybe they'll be everyone has to be as positive as james lemon and and kind of kind of be out there because obviously that's not what it's about but it's it's interesting that we maybe you know people aren't leaping to sign up to something like this because maybe their their head's in quite a challenging place yeah and you know Part of the coaching side of what I do, there's a lot of people who are struggling with that. And I wouldn't say it's just the youngsters. You know, there are senior leaders out there who are at the end of, towards the end of their careers and also going, wow, I've just been made, I've just been made redundant. What happens now? So, you know, you're, you're not alone in that. What I would say about the community is what have you got to lose if you did um, for joining it, right? The worst that can happen is you can go, this is not for me, and you can say, and you can say that and leave, right? The positive side around that I get around it is, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I lead a group of uh, revenue people who are interested in revenue management, very broad, very different from Mexico City to India to 
Panama City to, you know, I think we're also European in there. So it's very broad, great learning, great opportunity, and just also a great opportunity for us to check in. So as, you know, as Estelle and Steve said, it, you know, the mentors and the mentees stick together and talk to and, and get together and talk and talk amongst each other. You know, there's an opportunity and, you know, a problem shared as a problem sort of solved or a problem halved at least. So that's my advice to you on that. So uh, uh, if you are struggling from a, uh, a positivity perspective, I think that perhaps the way to flip it on its head is what is, what could you do? So if you're going, oh my God, my luxury end of the world is just falling apart and my luxury sales or luxury front office piece is just not there and there are no jobs there, what could you do? And James alluded to it earlier, what could you do? What, what would make, what would still be motivating? It might not be the, 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 the ideal career now, but it's a great learning and a great opportunity for you to springboard into something when, when business does start coming back. Yeah, no, thanks for that, Patrick. I think I'd also make the point that actually you should all congratulate yourselves. You've all taken the first step. You know, whatever time zone you're on, you've all chosen to spend an hour on a call finding out about this. So I'd already put you in the fairly proactive camp. Um, and, and you're obviously, there's something in your mindset that's thinking, actually, you know what, I want to find out what's going on. I want to plug into certain things. So um, I'm with Patrick. It's a really low bar to take one more click, if you like. Come and join us and see if it's see if it's useful. But um, it is tough. It is tough to um, not have lots more job opportunities and to know that to get a job, you now have to be proactive in this way, both online and then come to events and people keep asking to post questions in the chat and all of that kind of stuff so I, I definitely get that I definitely get that but I'd also say there's huge benefits so again I think someone like Laura who I'd never met six months ago um, I, I, I definitely think by, by being out there by, by people getting to know you they can see how smart you are. They can see what you're good at and what you're engaged at. In fact, Laura probably won't say it, but I've already offered her a job a couple of times. Um, <laughs> so uh, I definitely think kind of kind of throw yourself into it because, of course, you'd be in a community of you know 150 other people, and there will be times in that that people will be hiring and people will be looking for you know doing mini projects together. And I think we live in a world now where maybe that kind of full-time job at the five-star luxury hotel may take a while, but being open to side projects and people pulling together mini teams to do interesting projects will become more of a reality. So definitely, definitely stick with it. Um, so uh, Laura, maybe I will, will turn to you. Cause again, I know if you don't want, yeah, it, it's obviously been a year of ups and downs. What, what, what is it that uh, you get out of mentoring that kind of keeps you um, kind of, kind of coming back, if you like, on those, on those low days, how are you kind of fitting in the growth works and what are some things you're doing outside the community as you think about um, kind of finding your next role? Um, well, I think definitely it's not been easy and every single call we have just gives me a boost of uh, energy and, and connectedness. So um, I, I, it's been really, really tough. So it, it's, it's a fundamental um, part of my life at the moment. Um, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same. I wouldn't have the same kind of energy or the motivation to look for jobs to keep connected if I weren't part of the community. So game changer <laughs> um and uh outside of it uh what what's well, i am starting a job um soon uh with a food delivery app so um just to have something something to to grab on something to 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 spend my days on and that's still hospitality it's definitely not rosewood five star front desk but it's it's something taking my silicon valley experience and bringing thinking outside the box what can i do and in the meantime i've also been doing volunteering with a zero waste food store so that's again kind of touching hospitality but a different angle um and i was definitely thinking about sonder back when i was in san francisco as well when i was coming out of rosewood um thinking about different options and there's 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 a lot out there and definitely talking to everybody on the on the the community will help figure figure you out figure it out for yeah. yourselves as well um, can i ask you can i ask a question to laura yeah, as I know, I know it's on the uh, on the mind of many, um, um, you know, uh, students who would like to join the program. How is the process for you to navigate and find your mentor? It was quite easy in the beginning. I received a kind of questionnaire on, um, I'm not sure what it is today, exact process. It might be similar. James can just confirm, but I received a question on what was I primarily interested in and I said uh, for me it's learning and development 
um, because that's where I'm at. I am. I'm trying to, to learn and, and, and develop myself and see where I could be going. And so then I was connected with the mentor, uh, Mathieu Miosch, who is, has been um, at La Roche as a career uh, advisor um, in the lead of the, the career advice team. So he has just a lot of experience with different different hotels and the internship connections and and so that was that was the way that I was kind of um joined I joined his group but then in addition to that we have the channel on the app the slack app uh where you have hashtag find a mentor and the different mentors had introduced themselves and so then I picked a mentor that I felt was um useful uh to would be interested to, to speak with and then i just asked for a moment for for a 30 minute slot to talk with them um in detail and then i also um was joined another mentoring group um on innovation just because i'm interested and i'm available and free and i want to use my time more with the community and so i was offered to join that one yeah, and, and I just to say it's it's essentially the same process now. So you go to thegrowthworks.com forward slash mentorship. On there, there's a simple registration form that just triggers a quick survey, uh, which you get by email, which is uh, exactly as Laura says, a bit about your background um, and uh, your interests, what you want to learn about. And then um, we load you onto Slack, which is just a simple sign up process with your email. Bill, our new kind of head of engagement, will um, either drop you a note or grab a chat with you or both. And then in that 15 minutes, he can be like, oh, okay, I get it. It's kind of, you know, it's career development, it's revenue management, it's innovation. And then he can drop you into, you know, one to three groups, depending on what you're keen on. And then we're hoping, um, especially on the new platform, Slack's not perfect for it. But as Laura says, we have a channel called Find a Mentor, just, just like a whatsapp basically click on it you can see all the mentors like patrick they've said yeah you know i'm really passionate about revenue management i'm really passionate about helping with careers just drop me a note if you ever want to chat and that's, that's they'll post their linkedin profile that's a, really an invite to just drop them a note and, and take 30 minutes it takes a few it takes a little while to get used to slack if you can use whatsapp you can use slack and it's a it's a great tool anyways so it's probably not a bad one to get familiar with but yeah that's it. so so it's a mix of you know a kind of managed community so that we know what's going on we're trying to help be really effective but we're trying to make it more and more so people can just help themselves themselves uh, yeah. and maybe can steve uh, tell us about his experience on uh, finding a mentor and maybe if uh, since steve you are currently working in a hotel maybe you had challenges that you were able to discuss with your mentor how was it so absolutely so for for the access i believe it's uh, it's kind of the same as uh, as laura explained so well um, very easy. So with uh, with the the questionnaire that uh, is able to redirect you and uh, help you and uh, James and uh, and his team were, were wonderful uh, in uh, helping me also to find uh, a mentor, which is Estelle. Um, and yes, so about uh, about um, over here in, in in Los Angeles with my hotel. So. We had some uh, some uh, issue uh, at the hotel, and um, and Estelle was amazing because she took time. I really I would like to thank her, and I do it in here in public, but I really uh, thank you all you know, in private. But again, uh, she she took time on her on her time on her private time. She she, she took time and and uh, listened to me and, and and gave me advices gave me advices on not to react too quickly, but not and not uh, having no uh, reaction and also how to how to speak uh, directly with uh, with the person concerned so it was very helpful and it and it allowed me to to think twice before doing anything and um and Estelle was amazing about that and taking time for for it uh, not counting uh, the minutes but uh, but expl explaining me everything and uh, and I'm very very grateful for that Mm. That's lovely to hear. And uh, hey, still, how was your experience on your on your end? Well, th thanks to Steve, huh? I'm blushing. <laughs> um, no, it's um, uh, the experience. You mean for for the process of mentoring, or yes, your connection with uh, with the mentees. Uh, how you able to um, you know answer their questions, help them. Yeah, 
So, uh, yeah, there are two different uh, types or really three different types of, uh, of the community. You know, there's uh, the group sessions, which, uh, which I think is great because um, everybody gives a point of view. You know, somebody comes with a question and then, again, it doesn't matter, mentee, mentor, uh, everybody has an experience they lived and we just exchange uh, different types uh, of uh, points of view, which is which is great. It also really broadens the horizon. Oh, like I had the situation, how do you react? And I had a similar situation, so it, it really gets the discussion flowing. Then uh, the one-to-one -one sessions, uh, like I had with Steve or with other people who reached out to me, which. Uh, which is which is very different because it's much more on a personal level, as Steve said, and uh, I think that uh, for me everything is really rewarding. I have to say it's it's a bit no, as James said before, uh, our business is a people business, and uh, that's what we love to do to 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 mentor, to coach, to lead, to to be with people, uh, which maybe at the moment we can't be on the normal job so much because, uh, for example, in our case we can't have trainees, which normally is also a great exchange, so we can do it on the platform. And then, yeah, the, th the third way to really exchange is the, is the Slack, where, where you know, people are putting things or questions or ideas, and um, it's, it's a great exchange. So there's very different levels, and I think that's also really great because uh, there's something for everybody, you know, it's, uh, it's somebody might not feel comfortable with the group situation and uh, share their personal experience, so you can, you can have a one-to-one, -one, so it's very flexible. No, yeah, I think it's a, it's a really important point to mention because this platform allows a huge uh, diversity on uh, expertise, topics, ways to communicate. Uh, it's very it's very flexible and very open. So um, I think it's, uh, it's 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 and it's free, so people can come and go, and um, uh, it's 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 really an amazing tool uh, for personal development and, uh, and and enriching your your professional skills, right? Yeah, no, I think so. I think Maybe so. Patrick has to we oh, unfortunately I'm, I'm looking at the watch and it's uh, 10 55 already uh, we have fine. like Could, five minutes left have i got, have I got time for one more have i got time for one more question natalie is that be okay so i think uh, what i'd love to ask you all is what do you think you'll be chatting about in your mentorship groups over the next six months is kind of my question i think it's a really uncertain time but i'd love to kind of get a steer from it um patrick do you want to give some thoughts first yeah, so um, my group, I've, the way I set it up, as I said, we've got five of us. And then right at the beginning of the group, I said, OK, what do you want to talk about? We had our first introductory session. What are the things that you want to talk about? What, 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 what's bugging you? What do you want to know more about? Um, and the initial setup of the group was around revenue management. So we've got sessions around uh, OTAs. We've got sessions around uh, food and beverage revenue management. We've got things around sort of kind of what should we be doing now? What, how should we be selling? How should we be segmenting our customers and so on? But then also the same, the same group, we also wanted to talk about how do I deal with sort of more challenging, if I've got a challenging boss or, or managing upwards or um, uh, improving my impact and influence. Um, some of the other items that I've talked about in my previous group that I worked about, talked about some revenue management, but then really God, how do I really represent myself best on LinkedIn? How do I um, uh, how do I prepare really well for interviews? Um, you know, when I'm actually in the interview, how do I make sure that I remain on point and I get my point across? So we talk about different techniques around that. Um, so the group itself is led. Everybody in the group has a say on what they want to talk about weekly or bi-weekly as we run it now. Um, I sent out an email saying, what do you want to talk about? What, are, what on the list do you want to talk about? And then we agree as a group. And then we've done some preparation about how we actually run the, uh, what we're going to talk about in that group. And we go in and we have a great conversation. And actually, I try to talk as, as little as possible because the, the power is the discussion in the room from everybody in the room and so on. And only my job I see is to guide the conversation as much as, as well as I can. Perfect. Thank you. Estelle? Same question. Yeah, very similar. I mean, at the moment, it's very similar, as uh, Patrick says. Uh, and obviously, at the moment, the main concern is now how bit what we're talking about here. Now, how do I use my time now? How to, pre to uh, prepare when there are jobs again? 
And so there's a lot of discussion going on around that uh, from everybody's point of view. And I think, I hope that in the next six months, uh, everybody will have a job. That's, that's what I really hope. Um, and then I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll talk uh, maybe more about you know, how, how to integrate in the new positions, how to, to handle the change, no? because uh, starting a new position is also always uh, might be stressful. Uh, um in in a new environment as well so i i hope we'll talk about that and we'll for sure keep on talking about how how the post covid world is is different no and uh, i think a lot of the changes are positive uh, very often i say oh thank god that covid happened because uh, at least uh, we got rid of the mini bars for example so <laughs> i think uh, we will keep on talking about the changes as well really good thank you uh, laura same question yeah, um, in the innovation change group, I think uh, we'll, it, it's more of a coffee chat with this one. Each mentor decides what they want to do, how they want to set it up. This one is more of a coffee chat. You show up, um, we'll, we'll decide on the topic on the day, whoever has uh, a need for something. I think I'll definitely be talking about you know, the, the food delivery um, apps, uh, the kind of startups out there, the different um, kind of innovation there is around uh, hotels uh, in that group um, and and so far it, uh, there's been lots of discussion lots of new ideas and and also just updating each other on what's going on what's out there um, so that's very very exciting yeah you're gonna be busy and finally Steve what are your thoughts on the next six months and topics? I, I, I really hope as they still say I really hope first everyone will will have a, a job but I think also we'll speak a lot about flexibility because I think this is the next uh, the next step uh, of uh, of hospitality industry that that uh, will uh, companies look uh, for a lot of flexibility in in different departments. I think we'll speak a lot of uh, as we are in hotel operation. We'll speak a lot of a lot of uh, all the department and uh, and exchange a lot of knowledge. So I hope uh, I hope this is uh, how it will go. And I just want to jump. In also, I think, Natalie, uh, we have um, a question about uh, the MBA in Battalion. From Benjamin. I saw that. Yes, thank you, Steve. Um, uh, yes, uh, Benjamin was asking if it's uh, easy to join Battalion Los Angeles. Uh, and I say yes. Um, I'm not going to detail uh, too much here, but just uh, get in touch with me. You can uh, find my contact even on LinkedIn. Um, or, or put your contact information, we will get in touch. But basically, um, uh, you know, we have a pretty fast application process. And then um, the great thing about uh, coming in Vettel uh, USA is that we really help uh, our students to find jobs. And uh, this platform is also uh, an amazing tool uh, to get in touch with professionals. We, I wanted to mention also that uh, before going live, we were chatting with, uh, with the, the, the mentors and, and mentees, and um, uh, we mentioned that uh, as part of the, um, the tools that this platform offers is that um, mentors or people from the industry can maybe ask mentees to work on a project or, you know, even if it's not paid, but, you know, get involved in some uh, projects. Um, you know, James, I don't want to, uh, or maybe Patrick, you want to um, um, take on that. But we thought it was really a, a great opportunity to um, uh, get connected with some professionals, get, uh, you know, develop some skills through some projects um, and, and ways to even, you know, develop the resume and, and find work also based on that. Yeah, I mean, it's so this is a new idea for January when we launch a, a new shiny platform that's going to be even better. But we're always looking at new services. And absolutely, we're trying to encourage some of our hotel chain partners to post kind of digital work experience. You can work from home, but still be helping out at projects in hotels, hotel chains or tech companies or consultancy. So sign up to the platform. We'll be sharing more in a couple of weeks at our Christmas event. And um, we'll uh, yeah, stay in touch. Yeah, we look definitely looking forward to that. Um, we have uh, a session starting in January and then another one in August. Um, and uh, 
we are really looking forward to developing this partnership with the growth work and uh, offering more and more opportunities to our students to become amazing professionals and uh, represent the new generation of managers in the hospitality industry. Perfect. Thank you for having us. And thanks to all of our panel for giving up their, their time once thanks again you. to kind of yeah. share their thoughts and give back. But thanks for having us, uh, Natalie and Ali. And great to be here. And good it luck was... to everyone. It is tough out there, but there's definitely uh, it's time to collaborate and pull together. Absolutely. Thank you so much, James. Thank you to Patrick and uh, Laura, Estelle, Steve to have joined us. Uh, it, it was really, really interesting to, to, to learn about uh, the platform from your perspective. Thank you also to all the attendees who um, you know, registered to see this webinar and we hope to see you soon. Bye everyone, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, bye. bye.